folks, welcome back to the channel for yet another gallery tour of New York City. Good to have you here. If you have not already, consider subscribing to get more gallery tour videos like these. But now, come on you beatniks and gutter snipes, grab your vintage vinyls and your platform high tops. We are headed to the Lower East Side, baby. We stop off at Bitform's gallery with Jonathan Monahan holding it down. This work was fire. Den of Wolves is the title of this show. It's a somewhat sci-fi dystopic disconnect between humans and their technology, if you will. This show explores the symbols and semiotics and the imagery of power, power with a capital P. He's looking at the environmental factors of consumer spaces like supermarkets, something like Whole Foods or Walmart, technology stores vis-a-vis -vis Apple and the U.S. Capitol building, just to name but some of the images in this show. There's also a full-on hipster coffee bar that appears in one of the spaceship scenes that the, the freezer door leads into the full Walmart shopping experience. It's pretty trippy. All the spaces featured in this show are devoid of humans, except for some roaming cybernetic wolves that are walking around. This is one continuous camera shot that just loops through the whole thing. You won't know where this show starts and where it ends because it's so seamlessly uh, threaded together on the end and the front. So it all just looks like you're just looping back around for 15 minutes. It's about a 15 minute video. And I sat there and I watched the whole thing. It's mesmerizing. It, the video kind of puts you in a trance with this surreal, forlorn kind of synthesizing sound playing in the background. I would liken the music to the same kind of tone from the music in the movie Uncut Gems, except it's not blowing out my eardrum, so blood is coming out at the end of the experience. You know what I'm saying? There are printed works on the wall of regal figures donning regalia like crowns, cloaks, and scepters. Their technological makeups uh, suggest that power in the 21st century has everything to do with technological control. As goes digital, so goes society. You'll notice this velvet hand caressing a, a digital cloth and a repeated loop. Well, the artist will continue to release a weekly series of such works available for purchase. How will you purchase these? They're NFTs, baby. That means non-fungible tokens. What are NFTs? For the sake of this conversation, NFTs are exactly what you see here. It is a looping, continuous digital work that can be purchased as an original work from the original file. That's really all you need to know for the sake of this conversation. But if you'd like to learn more about NFTs, I probably won't do a video on it in the next time soon because I feel like the internet has widely written about what NFTs are at this point. So if you Google NFTs and you go down a rabbit hole for about just five minutes, it'll probably start to make more sense. But I don't want to get off topic here. Let's continue. So this work by Jonathan is an examination of digital currency through the lens of institutional power and where we are today in the digital world. Pretty scary stuff, huh? If you found Jonathan's work too interesting or too exciting, don't worry, I'm, I'll do a palette cleanser right now. We're gonna move over to the Kristen Tierney Gallery where the theme of the show is boredom. Two-person show, John Wood and Paul Harrison, title of the show, Bored. The artists are being playful and absurd. They have lowered the bar of play so low that you can't help but smile.
To see a school chair with wads of nasty pink bubblegum amassed underneath it is nothing short of grossly hilarious. Any good joke worth its salt is worth explaining. So you see, this work suggests that such a hypothetical student could have been sitting in the seat long enough to amass such a brazenly bodacious, bubblicious, or bazooka sculpture that you see here in front of you. Just a reflection of how bored, intensely disinterested they were over time. And that's why this sculpture as a joke really works. You see? You see what they're doing? Just, mm, that is real bubblegum. And a real chair at that, so not for nothing. What you see is what you get. This is a very defiantly neutral exhibition with wry humor just everywhere. You have drawings of erased clocks using graphite on paper, some pencil erasers sticking out of the sharpeners just there, some bored astronauts on the moon, sometimes moonwalking for effect. Uh, they're just there in space, not doing much of anything. The show is pretty cheeky and unassuming, and it is what you see. You get what you get. You come in, the show is called Bored, and they're not trying to impress you. They're just trying to impress upon you what boredom looks like, how to think about it from the experiences you've had in the day-to-day -day, in your own life, and how that might be reflected in a visual art space. I enjoyed it. Would not be a trip to the Lower East Side if I did not stop at Greenfingers Market. Going inside. Now, to the Tibor Negi Gallery. One of my faves, this is a small but mighty gallery space. It's only three walls and a window side, that's all. Assume Vivid Astro Focus is a collection of Brazilian artists together making work by that name. Assume Vivid Astro Focus. A-V-A-F. Avaf. Avaf? I say Avaf if I'm referring to them. So they're mostly centered in Sao Paulo, but also working in New York City back and forth from time to time. They work in many media, including video, wallpaper, textile, and neon lighting. I'm gonna try my German here for a second with the word. Gesamtkunstwerk. <clears throat> Gesamtkunstwerk? Gesamtkunstwerk. Gesamtkunstwerk. We'll do that. The artists here are going for a uh, Gesamtkunstwerk, which is a German term that roughly means comprehensive artwork. An all over sensory experience of being wrapped in an artwork surrounding you. But each work is also its own individual piece at the same time. Avaf is paying tribute in this show to a Chicago group called the Harry Who, who were similarly a nebulous form of creative beings. The Avaf mindset is that it is not one artist, one movement or collective, but all and none at the same time. And the work makes you get into that groovy kind of mental space as well. The works are pre-planned on a computer, the lines are sharply defined, and the gradients have smooth transitions from end to end. These are on corrugated cardboard, a VAF cuts through the top layer in spots to unveil the ridges below, furthering the visual texture of the work. Makes me want to run my fingers across it, it's very tactile. Yes, and this work is anything but serious. It's loud, it's funny, it's eccentric, dynamic, and multicolored. Across this work, Avaf is using over 500 color tones, which is made to radiate sensory stimuli in the same way a computer screen might do to your eye. This is a full shot of Skittles to the retina, and I'm talking every flavor packet. You feel a jarring expression of color that feels like your face is right up on the screen, getting those sweet, sweet hits of dopamine. Just a radiant experience from the team at Avath. Really enjoyed it. And just next door, we have Betty Cunningham Gallery. 
Andrew Forge is on exhibition, everybody, with The Limits of Sight. This is a body of work from a seasoned artist. Andrew's work show dates from 1973 to 2002 here in this show. I liken this to a visual orchestration of sound. Each dot is kind of its own refrain or a note within a symphony of other colors. We're talking pointillism here, people. That's right. Think about George Surratt and the Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Chate. Each dot is drawing you in closer to the humanity, linking you to the cosmos. Beulah. Andrew Forge, vibrating more dots than an incoming eye message. Check them out at Betty Cunningham. Spencer Brownstone has Katie Bell. Arena, name of the show. Let's get into some architecture. Katie's sculptures are a mix of the fabricated and the found using objects from around New York City. She's about the formal elements, standing structures, leaning structures, implied lines, light, and shadow across the forms. The forms allude to game pieces or stage props as much as abstract geometric architectural forms. These are perhaps a little difficult to maneuver and manage, but they're very playful in their visual appearance. Some interesting colors and textures are at play here. I especially really love the little stone ball structures with the veins of marble running through them. Not like little planets or bocce balls for the throwing, you know? The columns are about six feet tall and walking betwixt them gives you the feeling kind of like you're in a, an implied space like uh, some kind of a stadium, or as the show implies, some kind of arena. Very kind of Coliseum-esque, if you will. Yeah, Katie Bell, check her out at Spencer Brownstone. Right next to Spencer Brownstone Gallery is Rachel Uffner Gallery. Argavan Kosravi is on display here, and oh, my goodness. What you are seeing here are Argavan's quarantine projects. She did these over the course of COVID-19 and it's astounding. Argavan is an Iranian artist living in the United States. Her work here is an examination of the separation from her culture. You'll notice that these paintings are also sculptural operating on different physical planes. The fracturing and dislocation of the surface represent the same feeling of disjointedness from the day-to-day -day lives of family and friends back home. Her work also confronts the trappings that she felt in her home culture, namely the forces of patriarchy. These black threads in the work represent the reach of patriarchy, binding women and people to kind of this archaic standard of society. And part of the disjointed surfaces give thought to the separation of public and private within Iran. In the work you see close-ups of a woman's face, neck, or hands, for instance, a very intimate look. 
And the key that you see in some of the works is a symbol for liberation to unlock the latches of those patriarchal lines binding the images. I asked the gallerist what most people say when they see this work. She said the technical skill of the artist is obviously what most people point out, but the narrative is the real gold in this. Hearing Argavon's story is quite thought provoking, especially as we're starting to come out of the pandemic, when we can all relate to the feeling of being away from members of our family or our community. The inability to connect with others can have a fragmenting effect on the human mind. The psychological aside, these works are just damn brilliant. I tried to get some quality B-roll for you all so you could feel like you were seeing the work up close as much as possible, but mine eyes have seen the glory in person and the touch on these is exquisitely thoughtful. I'm interested to see how she plans these works because I imagine there's a considerable degree of drawing that precedes these works. If I were doing any work similar to this, I'd have to really sketch these out with precision to get everything to link and connect and make sense visually in the space. But this is just, just breathtaking work. I couldn't believe it. If you're in the area and you haven't gone to Rachel Uffner Gallery to see Argavon's work, make it a point to do so. Friends, thanks for going on another gallery tour with me. In the fine New York City days of summer, I appreciate your company. Hey, like, subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. It helps the channel, helps people find it. Hey, send this video to a friend if you think they would enjoy the artist they saw any of the themes in the work today. If you know someone who would get benefit from that, please share this video with them and get the community going. Let's get more people on these gallery tours and we can enjoy the work together. And like, subscribe if you haven't already. Really appreciate the support. Until next time, do what you always do. You know what to do. Stay creative.